別に奥さんを追い出したいなんて思わないけど君が帰るまでにはきちんと解決して奥さんとも別れてさっぱりして君を迎えるなんてそんなら玄関で会った時奥さんたちの前ではっきり宣言したらいいのよ日雇い妊婦をしてでも二人で生きようだなんて時計いかがですか渡辺ダンですはい。Let's talk first about the genre of the shomin geki. The shomin geki is literally what it, what it says. It's about the common folk, it's about people who have normal lives. It's about the people who don't have anything spectacular about them. It's not about the corporate leaders, it's not about the great geisha, it's not about the,、uh, the, the samurai warriors. No, it's about The common everyday salaryman and his wife and, and, and their trials and tribulations.、Uh, the genre came into extreme prominence after World War II as a way of reintegrating the population with the、uh, stress of, of being occupied, with the stress of having lost the war. And there were many masterpieces made during this time by filmmakers such as Mizoguchi Kenji and Ozu Yasujiro. But the person we're going to look at today is Naruse Mikio. Now, Naruse Mikio is perhaps the biggest Japanese master whose work is virtually unrepresented in the West. Yes, the、um, Criterion Collection did a version of、uh, When a Woman Ascends the Stairs, Onnaga Kaidan o Agaru Toki, or、uh, the BFI released a, a, a triple box set that included the movie、uh, Ukigumo in it. Now, Ukigumo is a movie that I approached with a great deal of trepidation because I'd enjoyed and found very meaningful a lot of Naruse's other movies. I especially liked his movie Nagareru, Flowing, which was about a geisha house in the post war period, right around the time when prostitution was outlawed.、Uh, uh, out, outlawed. And the geisha house, because it's kind of in that gray area, Uh, was looking at financial disaster, and it's about how the various women in it、uh, deal with that fact.、Uh, he did another movie called Meshi, Repast. Repast is a very weird translation. I mean, it means the, the same thing, but it's not a common English word. Anyway, Repast is about a couple who are having some troubles, and in the very end, they decide that staying together is better than being apart. So,、uh, again, I liked Naruse's movies. So, I was approaching Ukigumo, which is said by many to be his masterpiece, with、uh, an expectation, perhaps an expectation that was too high. It wound up that I did not like the movie because I felt that it encapsulated all of the worst elements of the Shomin Geki with none of its virtues. Now, what are some of the story elements in the Shomin Geki, particularly? Uh, those elements that are common to、uh, female leads. Well, first of all, they usually deal with、uh, a woman who suffers a lot. And, you know, me as someone who enjoys a good diva performance as much as anyone else,、uh, always approaches these films with the understanding that, hey,、uh, maybe it'll be like an American movie and she'll suffer the way Barbara Stanwyck suffers or Joan Crawford or Betty Davis does, not the way that,、uh, let's say, Gwyneth Paltrow would. And especially promising for this was that it had、uh, uh, Takamine Hideko as the lead. Now, Takamine Hideko is one of my favorite Japanese actresses because she ran the whole gamut from sentimental movies to comedies to, to re- really gut wrenching dramas. So,、uh, I, I, again, I approach this with perhaps too much hope. The story of Ukigumo is about Yukiko. Yukiko has just gotten back from,、uh, from being stationed in China during the war. And during the war, she'd had an affair with a man. And she comes to Tokyo in order to carry on that affair. Well, surprise, surprise, he's married. So、uh, her life looks like it's going to take a rather disastrous tumble, which indeed it does. Now, here's where、uh, I fell out of liking for the movie. Unlike 
uh, Hideko, uh, Takamine Hideko's other roles, where she's always been able to be a forceful character, someone who, even if she's beaten down by circumstances, uh, somehow manages to at least persevere. In this movie, she takes on the mantle of victimization. She, she takes on the mantle of being uh, what, was, what was pejoratively called from the movies of the Shochiku studio, Ofuna style, which meant really kind of like a, like a soap opera because they were shot at the Ofuna studio. And at its worst, the, the genre would degenerate into what was known as haha no mono or mother's story, which was always about a mother who was relentlessly tortured by her ungrateful children and by life at, and by life itself. The worst of these that I remember seeing back when I lived in Tokyo was one called Sekai no Haha, uh, uh, the world mother, where you actually had a scene where the evil daughter-in-law told the mother out, out, out into the cold while the son is away on a business trip and the mother leaves the house with her belongings packed on her back and gets stuck in a snowdrift. No, she doesn't die. It ends with a happy ending that's completely incongruous with what went on before it. And I'd always felt that that was kind of like the, the, the nadir of the genre. Ukigumo did the same thing. Uh, Takamine Hideko's character spends the entire movie chasing after this guy even though he's a louse. He refuses to leave his wife. He picks up another mistress. He moves to another town. I mean, I'm feeling that he's running away from her because she's some kind of a Glenn Close character. But no, she's, she spends all of her time looking very sorrowful and looking very victimized. And at the very end of it, he's finally ready to spend some time with her and she drops dead. So again, the, the, the movie in terms of its formal stuff is beautiful. It's well shot, the performances are good, but I just could not believe uh, Takamine Hideko as this kind of a victim. And, and again, I, I, I tend to not like this type of story no matter what country it's made in. For example, in the 1930s in the US, you had a movie called Stella Dallas with Barbara Stanwyck, again, one of my favorite stars. And in it, Barbara Stanwyck plays someone who's picked on by the world, and you just don't buy it. I mean, at the end of the movie, she's standing in the rain while her daughter's getting married to someone else, knowing that she's not going to be in her daughter's life. And I'm like, oh, please stop. I mean, it wasn't as bad as the Bette Midler remake, but it was really, really kind of laughable. The director, Mikio Naruse, might be one of the reasons why Ukigumo is problematic. Now, for someone who got ahead so fast within the very regimented Japanese studio system, you would think that Naruse would be an absolute role model for survival and for constantly being ahead of the curve. But maybe one of the challenges that Naruse had is that like uh, Takamine Hideko in the movie, he said yes to everything, to every project. There was never a project he said no to. So in, uh, in between doing his really great projects, he ended up doing ones that were just downright lousy or were not worthy of his talent. Now, truthfully, you look at all Japanese directors, and by the time we get into the 70s and 80s, a lot of them are doing TV movies like Hinoshita Keisuke and, um, and, 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 and Fukusaku Kinji and, 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 and some of the other good names. But, but they managed to make their TV stuff still vibrant and alive. Um, when Naruse was doing material he didn't care about, you can kind of tell he really didn't care about it. And that, unfortunately, might be one of the reasons why uh, I sense that in, in Ukigumo. Now, he obviously loved this one, but that passivity of the character was a little too reflective of Naruse himself. The other thing we're going to talk about is Oshin. Now, Oshin was uh, the equivalent of a telenovela. Every day uh, from Monday to Friday for 15 minutes in the morning, NHK, which is the national broadcasting system in Japan, ran this soap opera and it ran for a year. And what it was, was it was the story of an older woman who on the opening of a shop, which is kind of what she's always wanted to do, suddenly gets on a train and runs away. 
and her grandson goes after her to find out what's up. And she feels that somewhere in her life, uh, something has gone wrong. So we get a flashback through her entire life. And if I explain to you what the story is, you're going to bust out laughing because it sounds like a comedy. Because, I mean, to quote Thelma Ritter in All About Eve, everything but the bloodhounds yapping at her rear end. Everything that could possibly go wrong with this girl goes wrong. Her parents sell her uh, so that they can get enough money to buy rice. Uh, she goes and lives with an abusive family. Um, she eventually leaves the family and becomes a, a, a seamstress. And she goes through a lot of different businesses. She gets married, her husband's killed in the war, blah, 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 blah. And uh, coming to the present day, she's being bullied by her, uh, by her daughter-in-law, of course. And, and the only person who understands her is, is her grandson. Now... The reason I'm bringing up Oshin is, first of all, no matter how much melodrama it had in it, you couldn't take your eyes off of it. It was, it was compelling television. You, you were in with the actresses who played the roles. Why? You were in with them because no matter what happened to Oshin, no matter what tragedy befell her, she always was moving forward. She always said, okay, like Scarlett O'Hara, tomorrow is another day. She's going to do something else. She's going to figure it out. And she does. So, so compared to Ukigumo, Oshin was everything that I like in this type of story. Uh, a heroine who's plucky, a heroine who's willing to be forward-looking, a heroine who's not willing to let the world get her down. Uh, and again, in Ukigumo, that's all that happened, is that you had a passive character. Oshin is never passive. Now, uh, the problem that Oshin had as a series is very similar to the TV show The Sopranos. Now, after watching Sopranos for multiple years and multiple episodes and loving every second of it, most fans were disgusted with the way it ended because it didn't really have a conclusion. It just kind of stopped. Now, that's okay if you're doing an art film in the 1970s. It does not work after you spent years watching something. Okay, that's not as bad as St. Elsewhere, where at the very end of the series, you realize the whole thing has been the imaginings of an autistic kid, nor is it the end of the original Roseanne show, where it turns out it was all her uh, uh, writing as she's going through therapy because her husband's dead, uh, nor was it the ridiculous ending of Lost, where you just kind of want to get up and pick up your TV and smash it because you're so angry that you wasted so much time on something and then this is the way it ends. Oshin ends the same way. She is offered a chance to maybe marry an old guy who kind of likes her and might give her a chance at a late night happiness and sex if nothing else. Or maybe she's gotten come to peace. It just stops. And after watching it for a year, it wasn't enough. The bottom line is that, uh, that when you're doing Shomingeki, uh, the, the ones that have lasted, like the Ozu Yasujiro ones, and like some of the Kenji Mizuguchi ones, and the other Naruse ones, tend to have a character who moves forward the way Oshin did. Ultimately, I liked Oshin, but I really didn't like ただ母のいる家へ早く帰りたい。そんな幼い